Hello and welcome to this tutorial where we're going to take a look at how to recreate the effect that Honda used in the other side video campaign. So if you haven't actually seen the effect, let's just take a look. So the video plays, if I press the R key, it switches between. So as you can see there, if I'm toggling the R key on and off, it's switching between two different videos. So it's a really nice effect, extremely versatile if you want to use this in your own project. It, you can run with this forever. Like kudos to Honda for it, it's a really, really clever effect. So to create it, this is the file structure we've got. We've got our index.html, a main JavaScript, style CSS, and then our assets. So we have a default video, which will be shown by default, and then the exposed video, which is the video that will expose itself when we press the R key. So now let's look at the HTML we have. So we start off, we've just got a container, and inside the container, we have two divs, each of which contain a video. So we've given both of these divs a class of video container and their own ID, default container and exposed container. We've given both the videos some controls and we've muted the exposed video because when the default screen only, it only appears as if the default video is playing so we don't want the, the audio from the exposed video to interfere with that. So the CSS we have, we've taken our overall container, given it a width of 1260 pixels, which is the width of our videos, given it a margin of 100 pixels on top and bottom and auto to center it, and then we've given it a position of relative. We've given it a position of relative because the video containers themselves are positioned absolutely, and absolute positioning references the next highest up positioned element which would be the window if we didn't have this in but adding position relative to the container makes this the next highest up positioned element so the video containers will reference that instead so let's look at the actual browser so we can see what we've got so far so it looks like we've just got one video but because there it's two videos on top of each other and because they've both been absolutely positioned with no top, bottom, left, or right attributes, they just move themselves into the top corner of our container. So now what we're going to do in JavaScript is when we press the R key, the video that's currently showing will be moved off the screen using the CSS top property and then muted. And then the video that's now exposed will be unmuted because we set that to muted in our HTML and then when we release the R key the exposed video now will be muted again the other one brought back onto the screen that will be unmuted and we're back to where we started so let's now try to code this in JavaScript so in this video I'm gonna code it in a way that most beginning jQuery developers will probably try to tackle this and then in part two, I'll code the same functionality, but I'll modularize the JavaScript, which is better practice to get into the habit of. It's easier to read the code and the code runs more efficiently. So if you're serious about JavaScript, definitely watch part two and try to learn how to modularize your JavaScript. But now to continue with this video to try to get the functionality, we'll start out with a document ready function and in here we'll put all of our code so initially I want to just find all the videos on the page and I want to change the property the property I want to change is the volume and I want to just set the volume to 0.2 which is out of 1 just to make sure it's not really loud when we play the videos and I don't go deaf so now we want to find the documents and bind a key of like bind an event to it so on key down so anytime a key is pressed we want to fire a function the 
function that we want to fire will be inside here and we want to figure out if the key that was pressed is the key R. So to do that we're going to need to give our function an argument we'll call it event you can call it whatever you want though and that will be passed to it by the on method and it will be the key that was pressed. So now we can have a conditional if event dot key code so if the key code of the key that was pressed is 82 which is the key code for the letter R then run some code so what we want to do is change the top CSS property of our default container so default container dot CSS property we want to change is top and we want to change that to say minus 2000 pixels so now it's off the screen every time we press R and we want to mute it now so again we want to find our default container and then within this container so now we're, we found this now we want to find the video that's within that container so we use the dot find method and we want to find the video and when we do we want to change a property the property we want to change is muted and we want to set it to true and now the same procedure to unmute the exposed container video so we want to find an element with the is it exposed no just expose we want to find an element with the ID of exposed container then inside that we want to find the video and then when we do we want to change a property of muted to false so now when we press our R when we press any key this function will fire if the key that we pressed was the key R all of this code will run and that will move the default container off the screen mute the video and unmute the other video so now we'll copy all of this code for the key up event because when we release the key we want to change everything back to how it was so on key up fire a function we still want to check if the key that was released is the R key and then if it is change the CSS top property to zero so it's back to where it started and then we want to unmute this so set that to false and we want to mute the one that's now hidden set that to true save that now come into our browser and see what we've got so far so we'll refresh and now we can play this and the video is playing if we press the R key it moves that off the screen mutes it and shows the other video but now you might notice the problem this video isn't playing so if I release the R key we go back to that one so we're good as far as that's concerned but the other one's not playing so we we want to bind an event where if we play one video the other video will stop no the other video will start playing and if we pause a video the other one will also stop playing okay so to do that we want to bind two more events so this time we want to find the video so that finds all videos on the page and on and on play so that's if any video on the page is played we want to run this function so if any video on the on the page is played we want to run this function so what we're going to do we're going to run a for loop far i equals zero 
i is less than two because there's only two videos on the page so we only want to loop this twice i plus plus so we're going to loop through all videos on the page so we'll find all the videos dot get uh, i so what this does the dollar video the jquery video selector will find all videos on the page and put it into an array so now we're looping through that array using this for loop and using the get i it will get the ith element in that array so the array the for loop is going to loop through zero and then one and then when it gets to two this is no longer satisfied the for loop breaks so we're only going to go zero and one and that will get the zero with and the first element in the video array, which is our two videos. So get the ith video and we just want to play it. So that will ensure that if any video is played, the other video will also be played. And we'll copy this and change this to pause to make sure that if any video is paused, Uh, I can't type on pause we want to pause all videos so now if any video on the page is played the other one will also play and if any video on the page is paused the other one will also pause so this is all of our JavaScript we're done our functionality is spot on now so if we refresh we play and now if I hit the R key we have the other video playing release it and now we can pause it and we hit R and the other video has also paused so that is us we are totally finished with this implementation so like I said this isn't the best way to write the JavaScript because every time we call a dollar selector for jQuery it has to search the entire DOM so every time a key is pressed and the keys the key R it's gonna have to search the DOM three times whoops it's gonna have to search the DOM three times and then when we release the key it's gonna have to search the DOM three more times we don't want to be able we don't want to have to do that because we don't want to have to search the dom continuously it's just inefficient on resources and also if uh, another developer who wasn't involved in this project looks at this code on first glance it's not easy to tell what's going on you'd have to go through the code and read it line by line to figure out what was going on we want to make it easy for another developer to come in look at the code and instantly know what's going on. So in the next video, we're going to take a look at modularizing this code, which will make it easier to read and run more efficiently. So see you then.